There are those who believe that bad things only happen to people who deserve it, and that somehow, those who live surrounded by comfort and wealth are less likely to have bad luck and end up suffering a twist of fate. This story is proof that neither were right and that tragedy can shatter anyone's life no matter who they are or where they come from. Grief is a universal sorrow. Kyle Plush was a young student and athlete from Cincinnati who had his whole life ahead of him. Plush was only 16 years old on the day his life would change forever. Like any other young man his age, Kyle loved spending time with his friends. He played sports regularly, specifically tennis which he'd been passionate about since he was very young, and he dreamed of studying at some of the best universities in the country and achieving success later in whatever profession he chose. To be honest, young Plush's life was anything but complicated. At the tender age of 16, he lived in a beautiful house with a garden and owned a flashy car that his parents gave him when he passed his driver's test, a metallic gold Honda Odyssey that attracted attention wherever he went. Everything was going well and nothing seemed to indicate that his luck would change, and yet it did. Because if there's one thing money can control, it's destiny. If something is meant to happen, it will. It doesn't matter if you have a good life or a bad one, and young Kyle unfortunately found that out in the worst of ways. It all happened one afternoon when Kyle was on his way to attend a tennis match at Seven Hills High School where he was a sophomore. His friends were waiting for him to play a doubles match in preparation for the upcoming regionals. However, Plush never made it. The young man was late for his appointment, and as is usual for young and inexperienced drivers, he was speeding faster than the speed limit on the road connecting the city center with the school zone on the outskirts. The maximum speed was 50, but Kyle's car was going 90 per hour, almost twice as fast. Since getting his driver's license, the young man had shown little respect for traffic regulations, accumulating as many as five tickets in less than three months, most of them for speeding and for parking the car in prohibited areas. However, on all these occasions, the infractions had not had any serious consequences for him, except for the payment of all the fines. This was not a great effort for his family. You should drive more carefully, honey. Driving a car is not a game. You can't go so fast. Someday we'll have a scare and you'll regret not having taken care of us. His mother warned him every time a new traffic ticket for speeding came home. Don't worry, mom. Nothing bad will happen to me, I promise. I'm a great driver. It's just that I'm still getting used to the rules. Nothing bad will happen. I'll be careful. Her son replied, smiling and oblivious to the danger of her words. The only thing certain in Kyle's words was that he wasn't used to following the rules, and that would be precisely what ended up condemning him to death. While driving at full speed, Kyle came around a sharp curve. It was a difficult curve for even a skilled driver to control, but at the speed Kyle was going coupled with his lack of driving experience, it was almost impossible for the young man to avoid the impact. In a matter of seconds, Plush lost control and ended up hitting a tree on the side of the road. It was a giant tree sturdy enough to withstand the impact of the vehicle without suffering any damage. Kyle was not as fortunate. After the impact, 16-year-old Kyle Plush was trapped between the seats of his Honda Odyssey, but that wasn't the worst of it. In his abdomen, he had a large iron stump stuck and the pain was excruciating. He couldn't move, the car was crushing his chest and he couldn't move his arms either. He was very disoriented and weak, he could hardly breathe and he was losing a lot of blood. He barely had a few minutes to live. At most an hour, if he was to have any chance of survival, Plush had to act fast. The young man, barely out of strength, desperately tried to make a life-saving call to emergency services. With his arms immobilized, Kyle used Siri voice activation in an attempt to relay details of his whereabouts to a 911 operator. After several attempts, the cell phone recognized his voice and activated the call function. It was a short, anxious call with neither of them able to understand each other. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these real-life stories every day. Now, back to the story. Emergency services, how can I help you? Help, I'm stuck in my van near the Seven Hills parking lot, please. The young man tried to tell him almost out of breath. I can't hear you very well. Where did you say you were? I can't hear you. Did you hear me? I desperately need help. What's the address? Help, I can't hear you. Where are you? Hello, are you still there? If you don't send help, I'm gonna die soon, please. After that, the call was cut off. The sound quality was really bad, possibly because the microphone on Kyle's phone had been damaged by the accident. After losing communication, emergency services contacted the Hamilton County Sheriff's deputy to explain what had just happened. A young guy just called. He told me he'd been in a car accident and was trapped in the vehicle near a high school, but it was really hard to hear. It was a really strange call and I haven't gotten any more details. He seemed to be badly injured. Please put out a search operation. We have reason to believe his life is in serious danger. Reported the 911 operator to the sheriff, very concerned about Plush's mysterious call for help. After Kyle's first call, a search was organized to try to find him, and while officers began canvassing the area near the high school where he attended. Apparently, there are several parking lots associated with the school which made the search efforts extremely difficult. 
After an hour of searching with no results, the 911 operator attempted to call Kyle again, but it went to voicemail. The boy was unable to pick up the phone, still immobilized and feeling weaker and weaker. He had lost a lot of blood and the pressure in his chest was getting worse. Even so, he was still conscious and fighting with all his strength to stay awake for a few more minutes. You can still find me, there's hope. Siri, make a call to 911. Siri, call the last number for my call, please," muttered Kyle, trapped in the car, trying to get back in contact with the outside to have a chance to survive. A few minutes later, when Kyle managed to return the call, his voice was very weak. The boy knew he didn't have long to live and he probably wouldn't be rescued in time. It was then that he left a heartbreaking goodbye to his mother in case he never saw her or his family again. This is no joke, I'm dying. I'm trapped inside a gold Honda Odyssey van, Plush said. I probably won't have much time left. If I die, I want you to tell my mom I love her, tell her to forgive me and that she was right, she always was," muttered Kyle one last time before blacking out again. Unfortunately, those would be his last words and he'd never open his eyes again. That same night, approximately two hours after Kyle's first emergency call, the boy's mother reported her son missing. His friends waited more than an hour for the young man to arrive at school, but when they saw that he didn't show up for the tennis match they had planned, they suspected something bad had happened to him and notified his parents. But it was too late, and their help would arrive two hours late. Kyle's parents rushed to the sheriff's office and when they got there, they found everything out. The reality hit them hard and they were shocked to learn their son had been in an accident and that his life was probably in grave danger if he was still alive. The sheriff told them the emergency call received two hours earlier coincided with the disappearance of their son and that the area where he had disappeared was close to the meeting point where he had arranged to play the tennis match. My son never disappeared like that of his own free will. I'm sure something bad has happened to him. The cell phone, look for his cell phone. My husband has an app that shows the location of everyone in the family. We use it for security. I think it could tell us where my son is. If the phone's still active, we have a chance," said Kyle's mother, desperate to find her son as soon as possible. Kyle's father used the phone locator app, which led him to the correct parking lot. Quickly, emergency crews and firefighters made their way to Kyle's position. They ran as fast as they could, but nothing was enough. At 9 p.m., operators received another call, this time reporting that Kyle Plush had been found lifeless. His body could be rescued from the crushed vehicles, but paramedics could do nothing for his life. His injuries from the accident were too severe and he'd been trapped for too long. They could only certify his death and offer condolences to the family, who arrived a few minutes later at the scene of the accident. The Hamilton County Coroner's Office performed a preliminary autopsy on Kyle's body and ruled the death accidental. Preliminary autopsy findings are asphyxia due to chest compression and exsanguination. Probably even if they had been able to get him out of the car alive, he would have died a few hours later because of the severity of his injuries. It is a tragedy, there was nothing to be done, concluded the coroner. Kyle's family was devastated by the death of her son. Friends, family, and members of his high school teaching staff came together to say their final goodbyes to the young man. The community's love for the boy was so great that even a few months after his death, they decided to create a small monument in his honor in the school's courtyard, the place where he'd lived so many moments of happiness. In this way, anyone who wanted to remember him and honor his memory could visit him and leave flowers. What a sad story. No one deserves to die so soon, although in the end, no one deserves to die, least of all the way young Kyle did. His family will forever mourn his loss, a goodbye that could have been avoided if he'd chosen to play by the rules. His story is a reminder of the importance of being cautious on the roads and of the thousands of lives that are unfairly lost every day, shattering the hearts of all those who love them. Did you like this touching and surprising story? If so, we invite you to leave us a comment expressing your opinion. If you want to continue enjoying inspiring stories like this one, subscribe to our channel or check out the other videos shown at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for your cooperation.